coffee is stout. We do not, we do not go to it. Okay. I think you should mm -mm. Alright, go ahead. Five, four. You can't be bored already. Five, four, three, two, one. Hey friends, welcome back to Bible Fun with the Duns. Today we read 2 Samuel chapter 16. Let's get started. Okay. So <laughs> chapter 16 is one of those chapters where there's a, just a lot of sad built into that. And uh, what you kind of find here is this is not a fall from grace, but this is a consequence of sin. So you remember way back to when David sinned, uh, Nathan had told David that he would have adversity that comes from his own family. David didn't realize it yet, but that adversity would have a name and it would be Absalom and Absalom would want his country. He also uh, heard that this is going to kind of be passed through and this is going to be one of those things that continues. And so even though God had forgiven David's sin, it did not erase his consequences for his sin. Now, I also want you to remember this. In, uh, in Joshua, we would say that God is the God upstream. So remember this. So when Joshua is going to the Jordan River, the Jordan River parts so that the Israelites can walk through on dry land. You remember that. But what actually happened was instead of it parting like the Red Sea did where there's walls built up on both sides, God had actually gone up the river and stopped the river up so that everything quit flowing and everything they were able to walk through on dry land. So in Joshua, we would say that God is the God upstream, but in David's life here, we would say that God is not only the God of the ups, he's also the God of the downs. Okay, so there's the up and downs of life, the good days and the bad days, the vicissitudes of life. This is where that happens. Now, uh, if you look at chapter 15 that preceded this, you may have to go back to last Friday to remember this. In that chapter, David was praying and he said, Oh Lord, I pray, turn the counsel of Ahithophel into foolishness. Well, that happens in this passage. Shit. It also happened, it says, and when David, now it happened when David came to the top of the mountain where he worshiped God, there Hushai, the archite, came to meet him with his robe torn and dust on his head. And so now David has a spy named Hushai, and he goes to kind of do this. So not only when we open this passage do we find that David's prayer has been answered, that God is going to adjust the, the, the wisdom of Ahithophel, so God not only answers prayer, God provides for needs. Because when you open up in this chapter, it says, and when David was a little past the top of the mountain. So listen, he hasn't walked on for miles. He's only walked steps since this prayer. There's Ziba, the servant of Mephibosheth, who met him with a couple of donkeys saddled and on them 200 loaves of bread and 100 clusters of raisins, 100 summer fruits and a skin of wine. And so listen, not only has God said, hey, listen, I heard your prayer, but I'm, I'm also going to provide for your needs while you're, while you're making this trek out into the desert. Now, I, I could say here, there, that there's a, there's a lot that goes on. I wonder if we're supposed to really trust the story of Ziba. I don't really trust his version of the story, and we can get into that why later, but, but, I, but I don't think that he's on the up and up on what he has to say here. But notice what, what happens in verse, uh, in verse 2. So Ziba said, The donkeys are for the king's household to ride on. The bread and the summer fruit are for the young men to eat. And the wine are for those who faint in the wilderness to drink. So the wilderness is a dry and weary place. But it does not mean God had not planned to provide for them even there. So when we're, uh, when we're reading this story, God is, is showing himself to be pretty good in this story to take care of David. Hello, he wants you. He doesn't. Uh, he, to, to take care of David's need. The next guy we meet in this story is a Benjaminite named Shimei. He hates David. He thinks that David is now getting what David deserved. And so, um, so whenever we're reading through the Bible, it, it says here in, uh, in verse number seven, also Shimei said thus when he cursed, he said, come out, come out, you bloodthirsty man, and you rogue. So, uh, so he's calling David, really, he's calling him everything but a child of God. When we're reading through the book of Exodus, 
Exodus chapter number 22 talks to us a great deal about how we're supposed to be living and how we're supposed to be treating people. Listen to what verse 28 says in Exodus. You shall not revile God nor curse a ruler of your people. Mm -hmm. Now, listen, you're going to hear from Shimei later, and uh, this is not his proudest moment. But I want to just tell you this. When I read this, I, I wrote this in the margin of my Bible. I wrote that, you know, well, I'm not going to tell you exactly what I wrote in my Bible. I, but I, I did say this to myself. I said, I need to be very careful speaking about leaders that I don't understand all that they're going through, but I have definite opinions. So think about it like this. Have you ever had a leader in your country that you didn't really agree with? You didn't agree with their voting, their policies, their path. You didn't agree with anything. And you just felt free to talk about them however you want to. Is that really the way God told us? No, that's not the way of God. Now you may disagree as this guy disagreed with David, but this guy, this guy didn't know the full story. As a matter of fact, David had never done any violence to Saul's house, but this man would not be swayed by the facts. He had his opinion and his opinion was facts and, and, and it, it made him look dumb and he was in sin. I have to be very careful of looking up to Washington, D.C., a place I never go and go, I can't believe what they or he or she did. And listen, I'm not giving any names, but I say I, I, I need to be very careful how I talk about them because the New Testament's only, uh, only kind, of, kind of admonition there doesn't need my opinions. It says they need my prayers. Mm -hmm. So, Jen, what was your takeaway from this? Well, I have seen in the past few chapters the people surrounding David, the people surrounding people in power, everyone wants to get in their two cents and give their advice and give their um, what they think is wisdom. And I guess my big takeaway is people are always going to let us down. We can never... <laughs> We can never count, and I'm not trying to be pessimistic, but we have to hold everything that people say up to what God says. And God, he will never let us down. God is always trustworthy. And um, and so he needs to be the measure by which we compare everything everyone says to us. I see um, a story, we start this chapter with he said, he said, and in a few more chapters, we're going to see the other side of the story. So... We, we see that where people fail in their own descriptions. Also, we see, like you said, um, David's prayer for, what's his name? Ahithophel. Ahithophel. To, to his, his advice to be bad. And so Absalom did not, he obviously didn't know David prayed this, but Ahithophel's always been pretty good advice to David. And so he was trusting him. And the advice that he gives is, is horrible and um, it, I'm reminded that we should surround ourselves with wise people. We should be careful with who we are accepting advice from, accepting criticism from. If it's someone you would not go to for advice, always consider the source. Don't accept their criticism. Um, and then at the end of the day, like people are just people. They're fallible, they mess up, they sin on purpose. I know that's shocking. And so always, Hold up wisdom and hold up criticism, hold up advice to God's word and what God says. It should never go against what God says. And if it does, go with God. Yeah. I think a couple of things also you need to recognize here is what does scripture say about sin? A man reaps what he sows. sows. Mm -hmm. So David, all this began, began when David sinned against another man's wife. And this chapter ends with another man sinning against David's own wives. Mm. And what David did in secret, this is now done on a rooftop. By the way, where did David sin with Bathsheba begin? On a rooftop. On a rooftop. Where is David's son continuing to sin? On a rooftop. The difference is David did his sin in the dark. This one is done in broad daylight. Like there's, there's, a, there's a lot that's happening here. But I'm going to tell you what I like. I like David's point of view of this. He's got to be tired. He's got to be sad. He's got to be heartbroken and he's got to be afraid. 
But in verse number 12, it says, it may be that the Lord will look on my affliction and that the Lord will repay me with good. So David knows God is a God who shows mercy to sinners. Let me give you a, let me give you a song. I waited patiently for the Lord and he inclined to me and heard my cry. He also brought me up out of a horrible pit, out of the miry clay, set my feet upon a rock and established my steps. I'll tell you what, that's still the God we have today. I hope you keep reading and just know there's stuff to learn here about who God is, even in the messy parts of who people are. All right, see you tomorrow. Bye. Bye.